Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. The topic of this video is Girocastra, Albania, the best preserved Ottoman period town in Europe. There are a number of smaller communities in the Islamic world which to a very significant degree have preserved their traditional townscapes and material and non-material Muslim cultural heritage, which we present as destinations of special interest to Muslim travelers or others with an interest in exploring and experiencing the depth and diversity of Islamic culture, while enjoying a safe and comfortable tourist experience to the best international standards. All of these communities in this series have been proclaimed as World Heritage Sites by UNESCO. Girokastra is located in the south of Albania, close to its border with Greece and not far from the Adriatic Sea coast. It is the best preserved Muslim majority town in Europe in terms of its historical built environment and traditional way of life. It was inscribed by UNESCO in 2005 as a World Heritage Site of outstanding global significance to humankind, a rare example of a well-preserved Ottoman town. The Republic of Albania today has a population of approximately 3 million with a Muslim majority of approximately 61%, according to the 2011 census. Other surveys estimated as high as 82%, together with Catholic and Orthodox Christians and those of other affiliations. The region had long been Christian prior to the early 15th century when it became part of the Ottoman Turkish domains. While much of the Balkans converted quite quickly to Islam, the process of Islamization was gradual in the south of Albania, where there was a substantial Greek Orthodox Christian population. It gained momentum in the 19th century. The Girokastra region, not becoming majority Muslim until 1875. During the course of the 19th century, when Balkan Christian Greeks and Serbs were fighting for their independence from the Turks, Albania's majority Muslim population became increasingly concerned about losing their identity by being absorbed into the new state entities and thus became a major force in the movement towards Albanian independence, which was declared in 1912. In the 19th century, Muslims constituted about 70% of the Albanian population, a population which remained quite constant between the First and Second World Wars, when Albania was the only Muslim country in Europe. Girokastra is a beautiful town, built on the slopes below a protective citadel, the largest in Albania which dominates the strategically important route along the Drinos River Valley. Its modern Albanian name, Girokastra, is derived from its Greek name, Agirokastro, meaning silver castle, an apt description of the silvery grey stone from which it and the town's houses, roofs and cobble streets are built. The area has preserved not only its traditional built environment, but also its natural beauty, largely intact, together with, with its traditional rural way of life and economy, rare nowadays anywhere in Europe. This way of life was moulded over a long period of time by the traditions of Islam. However, this process was within a particularly Ottoman context which also respected the traditions of the Balkan Orthodox Christian community, administered by its Patriarchate in Istanbul, which has thus been able to continue its spiritual and cultural development to the present day. This city of stone, as it is popularly called, has about 44,000 inhabitants, some 500 traditional two-storey and fortified houses, officially designated cultural monuments and other buildings built primarily by wealthy Ottoman landowners and prominent officials 
lined cobblestone streets with wide views over the river plain below. The town was the capital of an Ottoman Sanjak district and had a major regional bazaar selling agricultural produce, livestock and locally made leather and textiles. A French consul in the 18th century noted that the town's products had already gained a reputation in Europe. The famous Turkish traveller Evliya Selebi, who visited Giro Orchestra in 1670, recorded that it had 2,000 houses, two covered bazaars with 200 shops, eight congregational and seven neighbourhood mosques, three Sufi lodges or teke, three madrasas, five primary schools, maktab, one hammam, three churches, five fountains and five guest houses for visiting merchants. Celebi described the inhabitants as a race of warriors, mournful, somber, chaste, virtuous and brave. In 1727, another madrasa was established there, which functioned without interruption until it was closed by the state in 1967. The whole presents a cultural landscape which is outstanding testimony to the wealth and diversity of the urban and architectural heritage of the region. The majority of Giro Orchestra's buildings date from the 17th to the early 19th centuries, the town's most prosperous period, and have stone-built, windowless, lower stories for livestock and storage and upper stories of wood and plaster, where families lived and hosted their honoured guests. Many are built as defensive structures, reflecting tensions between competing families and clans. These rooms are often cantilevered outwards above the street so as to create more space, while at the same time ensuring privacy, a feature typical of Islamic Ottoman town architecture across the Balkans and Anatolia throughout this period. Wandering through this pleasant town, one becomes immersed in the feeling of being back in the world of the Balkans of the 19th century and earlier, when a diversity of cultures and occupations coexisted under a Turkish umbrella. Following the forced mass exchange of Christian Greek and Muslim Turkish populations, two million in total, which took place between Turkey and Greece in 1923, and the destruction of traditional Muslim communities and townscapes in other parts of the Balkans during later 20th century conflicts, Girocastra provides a unique opportunity to step back into a world which has all but vanished elsewhere Nevertheless, Gir Orchestra also experienced the savage effect of aggression, in this case also political and ideological. In 1967, the hardline socialist regime, then in power in Albania, proclaimed an ideological and cultural revolution on the model of that being implemented by the People's Republic of China, with which Albania was closely aligned with catastrophic impacts on its society and its heritage. The overarching object was the eventual destruction of all organised religion in Albania, as a national literary publication of the time phrased it. The regime had, quote, created the first atheist nation in the world, end of quote. All religion was construed as a social threat that undermined the cohesiveness of the nation. Consequently, the state's policies and actions attempted to destroy the Muslim way of life and culture throughout Albania. Muslims became a particular target as their very physical presence was considered to be an ideological presence in the minds of the people. In 1967, over 2,000 religious buildings and other monuments including some 700 mosques, were rapidly destroyed across Albania. Those few that remained were either repurposed or abandoned. 
Twelve of Dirokastro's mosques were demolished, leaving only the mosque and its minaret adjacent to the bazaar standing. It was saved by being granted the status of a cultural monument in 1973. Religious institutions of all faiths were forbidden to be involved in any way with education of the people, of the young, and were prohibited from owning property or operating philanthropic and welfare bodies, hospitals, etc. Religious services were prohibited with very severe penalties. Personal possession of a Quran and other religious literature was forbidden and parents were advised not to give their children Muslim or Christian names and ordered those with names which did not conform to state ideological perceptions to change them. Paradoxically, however, this ideological pogrom was to result in the preservation of most of Giro Castro's built character and traditional occupations. As the Albanian leader, Enver Hoxha, who was born in Giro Castro, proclaimed the town and that of Berat, also inscribed as a UNESCO World Heritage Site, as museum towns. Considerable effort and funding, including the support and training of specialist craftsmen and restorers, was extended to conserve and restore the town's material, if not spiritual, environment.